Hi, this is Neil from Pro Tools PC and today I'm going to give you a look at Pro Tools 12.4 and its new Freeze feature. It's finally here, Freeze. This is what people have been waiting for for a very, very long time and it's one of the highest requested, if not the highest requested features on the Avid Idea scale for years and years. It began to seem a little bit strange that almost every other DAW had Freeze a long time ago and everybody was beginning to wonder what had happened and why it wasn't in Pro Tools. Well, that day has come, here we are, uh, we have Freeze. So uh, this is, is really simple. There's not an awful lot to talk about because it's so straightforward. So what you have on every track now is a little snowflake icon you can see here on the left. And that is the Freeze function. You'll get one of those on every audio track and every instrument track. And what it does really is just a bounce in place of the track with plugins applied if required. So if we look at the mixer here, I've got an audio track with just a guitar DI. And if I just uh, bypass the tracks to start with um, and mute the drums. So it's just a basic guitar DI and uh, there's a drum track going along with it, uh, which is Native Instruments Machine and that's MIDI playing to Machine. And then what I have is an instance of 11 and that's just playing. So if I unmute those. So there you go, very basic. And I've just stuck a BF3A afterwards just as an example, which I'll show you in a minute. So what you can do to freeze the 11 over the top of my DI is literally just hit that snowflake and off it goes. It renders very quickly and bang, you can see the waveform change. And that's actually shown you that the kind of compression that the guitar amp plugin applies and flattens out the yeah, transients there. So you, it's pretty obvious that it has been applied over the top. And what you'll see in the background is this diagonal kind of hashing. And that shows you that the track is frozen. If you look at, say, that MIDI track, for example, it doesn't have that. And so any track with this hashing on there, you'll know is frozen. And also you have the snowflake illuminated. And if you look on the uh, insert slots, you'll see that Snowflake's there and also the original plugins are greyed out. Now to unfreeze, it's really quick. Just hit that again and bang, it's straight back. No rendering or anything, it just undoes it straight away. Now if you notice when I push the uh, Snowflake on the uh, slot here on the, uh, on the arrange page, it rendered everything in every slot. What you can do if you do it from the mixer, you can choose a place where you would like to render from, much like the commit feature. If you right click on 11, you'll say freeze up to this insert. So much like it does with commit, commit up to this insert. What that will do is freeze 11, but not the BF3A. So that then allows you to carry on adjusting BF3A or any other plugins afterwards. Um, I could have done the same thing there and, and done them both. You can do it at any point in your plugin chain, but it's accumulative, so you can't freeze something after something previous. It's only up to that point. So it kind of cascades down. So there, that's 11 frozen and not the BF3A. What you can do as well, if, if both were frozen, let's just go back again and freeze them both and I changed my mind and I wanted to actually unfreeze only the BF3A. Right click on the 11 and choose freeze up to this insert and it'll re-enable the BF3A. It'll do a new render and bring it back, there you go. So there is a way to claw yourself back without having to unfreeze everything then refreeze again. Uh, it it kind of kind of makes sense. Okay, so that's an, that's an audio track. What I'll show you now, it will, will be an instrument track just to show you the difference. So I've got machine running there with the drum kit and this MIDI file here is playing machine. And if I choose the uh, freeze now, you'll see it actually overlays the audio waveform over the top of the MIDI track and it puts this hashing across there. 
So it's very obvious that that is a instrument track that has been frozen. So again, plays back perfectly, plays back perfectly as you would expect. Uh, it is no different at all. It's literally just a rendered track. So if I freeze both of them down, both tracks, that's taken a lot of load off my CPU straight away. That was running about 20% and I'll go back again and show you, but if we just play this back now, 1% CPU. So see how much that's clawed back. If we just unfreeze again, so that's one instance of machine and one instance of 11 and a BF3A. Let's just see. 20% so freezing it can instantly save you a lot and this machine has got an Intel i7 3770 CPU so it's a couple of years old but it's no slouch but as you can see it's quite easy to accumulate quite a bit of CPU usage so this will come in handy for freeing up CPU power to be in to be able to work a lot further so even by today's standards and computers are much faster, it is useful. It will be useful if you think you've got, I don't know, a session where there's five or six instances of 11. It soon adds up. So it's great. Now, the limitations of freeze are that, let's just freeze this track here. Once it's frozen, you know it's frozen because you've got these hash lines across in the background. If you uh, go to edit anything, you can't. It just doesn't do anything. You can try and put an edit in there. Nothing. Just can't. Can't cut or paste or anything. It's literally frozen in place. You can't trim it. There's no clip gain there. Nothing at all. And that's one of the limitations of freeze. If it's something that you're going to want to edit, you unfreeze it and then you can edit. Put fades in. Also, freeze doesn't apply any automation or any other features. It literally, the only thing it does is apply the plugins as if it's a bounce. Um, and then it freezes any editing ability. Because it doesn't apply anything like automation, that's still working in the background. So you can still apply automation, etc. It's completely automation and independent. Whereas if you look at commit, that can render automation, uh, volume and mute automation and, and pan and can copy sends and group assignments. So that's much more complex or much more detailed. And that's one reason why you would use commit over freeze or vice versa. So bear that in mind. So that there are obvious reasons why you'd use one or, or other and it's up to you to decide which one fits best. And as a general rule, I would say freeze is for using temporarily. If you're in a session, you just want to snapshot and keep things the way they are, but you know you're going to want to go back later and edit further, just freeze it, then unfreeze it and do what you want later. If you're thinking you're done with what you've come up with, then you can commit it, save all the power. And obviously when you do a commit, just to go back over this, we've been through this before, but just to go back over it, if you commit, uh, an instrument track for example it will render it and create a new track now you can obviously have the original disabled and hidden and then you've just got a new track and you just treat it like audio so you can do it, all the edits as usual so it really is a case of different processes for different choices you need to make that decision and you'll get used to it you'll work out what is best fit for what situation you're in Another key point to make sure that you understand is that if you're working with somebody else and you're going to freeze tracks and then send it to them, the freeze will only work if they're also running Pro Tools 12.4 or later. If they've got an earlier version of Pro Tools, the freeze just won't be there and everything will open up expanded and unfrozen. So if you've got a very heavy session and you've frozen a lot of pieces to the track, and you expect to send it to somebody in a quite lightweight form because they've got fairly weak computer, beware, it'll open up at its full expanse and could be more than their computer can handle. So as a rule of thumb, if you're going to send stuff to other people, use commit. 
use freeze personally or make sure that the person you're working with has 12.4 or later. Hopefully that's a good tip uh, to bear in mind. So hopefully that's given you a good idea of what freeze does and uh, how it differs from commit. And obviously if you have any questions, you can comment on the video or come and comment on the website in our comment section. Email us, we're always happy to chat. It might be easier to put it on the comment section than other people can see and uh, and they can join in on the comments as well. But yeah, come talk to us about it. Hopefully that's been useful, giving you a good idea of what happens with freeze in Pro Tools 12.4. Uh, thanks for watching and I hope to see you back again soon. Goodbye.